I've stopped using body positivity and started focusing more on fat liberation and fat positivity. I'm so bored of straight-sized girls talking about loving themselves for likes. Hmm, so you leave the body positivity movement because it was too inclusive to bodies that you feel are too privileged and undesirable, right? So you joined the fat positivity movement to get a little bit of that exclusive body positivity love because, hey, instead of just liking all bodies and being nice to everyone, I want to feel like a special snowflake because instead of, you know, going to the gym and bettering myself, I just want people to tell me that I'm okay so I can stop crying about my lack of character. Body positivity! Okay, but instead of focusing on obesity, which is, you know, curable, use models with stretch marks for insecure moms, deformities, amputees, those with skin deformities, etc. Something that you can't control. For example, if you have scars on your legs from vasculitis, it's non-curable, and the scars can and will be permanent. People need to focus on body positivity with people like that because, one, you can't help it, it's not your fault. Two, problems are non-curable while obesity is. But those diagnosed with obesity give up or believe in body positivity. People need to show those with permanent or non-permanent skin problems or deformities or stripe marks that it's alright and you can still be beautiful. People have been making this argument for a long time that body positivity has been co-opted by a bunch of people who just don't want to work out. When in reality it was meant for people who didn't have legs or those who have skin issues. You know, people who can't change things about their body and simply just want to feel beautiful in the public eye. But no, we live in the real world where nobody can have anything nice. So yeah, a movement that was meant to actually affect the lives of those who can't change something about themselves because it's permanent and they just want to feel beautiful about themselves was co-opted by people who have actual issues that can be cured simply because they don't want to see change in themselves. Alright, so fat privilege? Yeah, yeah, it's called being born in a place and time where food is so abundant that you can gorge yourself while others starve, all the while complaining of the social inconveniences that you suffer as a consequence of your choices. Now, why can't Tumblr be like this all the time? If, if Tumblr was like this, no one would give Tumblr crap. But it isn't. It's just, it's a wonderful gem. It's a gem of sanity, and we all enjoy it. Obesity is a slur. It's used to dehumanize, oppress, harm, and kill. It causes less harm than some slurs and more harm than others, but it's no less valid. Wow, there's a lot of cope in this post. Imagine just picking a word out of the out of the ether that you think is just mean because you don't like it when people call you obese, and just claiming that it's a slur but having to justify it in the world's most cumbersome way. It affects some people in some ways, but most people in no ways, but it's still valid. Get this, there's a letter right after the letter M that people say and then follow it up with word because the, the word itself is, is so mean and crappy that most people can't say it. Even in this very moment, I have to obfuscate. I have to go out of my way to avoid this word and what it is because it carries a lot of social baggage. Obesity is a medical term. It's nowhere near a slur. Listen, morbidly obese is a ridiculous classification that many of you are so comfortable saying in front of and to people because you've been taught to pathogize fatness. Call me deadly fat, at least it sounds cool. Yeah, I'm sure it does sound cool. It's a great way to cope with the fact that you're gonna die at 45. I want you guys to understand something. When your doctor says you're morbidly obese, they're not clowning on you. They're not trying to make fun of you. They're not trying to laugh at you or make you feel bad. They're trying to tell you, hey, you got maybe 10 or 15 years left on this planet before you have a heart attack and die. Obesity, morbidly obese, overweight, those are medical classifications, those are meant to help you, they're not meant to make fun of you. Making softer language to make you feel better about your lifestyle choices isn't going to prevent the inevitable, it's not going to save your life. Last time I checked, a word isn't a defibrillator. Thin privilege is about seeing yourself as thin, it's about the freedom to move through the world easily. Thin privilege looks like walking into a store and easily finding your size. It's about going to a restaurant without fear because you know you'll be able to fit into any seating available. It's about not only being able to buy one plane ticket and not having to worry about fitting through the aisles or seats of airplanes. Thin privilege is the ease of existing in a fat phobic society that praises thinness. It's about being represented in the media even by a plus size model. It's so much more than seeing yourself as thin. It's about living without worries. 
And it makes me angry to see thin people say that they're only thin because they have privilege because literally nobody gets to choose whether they are thin to have privilege. It's fine to have thin privilege, but it's worth acknowledging and shifting the conversation to people who exist in larger bodies, who have experience that we can't speak on in any way, shape, or form. Wow, I haven't seen so many tired arguments crammed into one pointless paragraph. But you know what? I'm in the mood to hurt somebody's feelings, so let's tear this woman apart. To begin with, if you guys didn't already know, if I didn't already tell you, thin privilege is not a thing. You can't have privilege for something that's normal, something that's basic. Everybody starts as thin. And yes, I do acknowledge that some people are born larger than others, but hey, you can still lose the weight. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Now, she goes into detail about all the things that thin people do that fat people can't, right? Fitting into airplane seats and aisles, finding clothes that fit you, realizing that nobody wants to see you on any screen. Simply put, the reason why you can't fit in a chair or an aisle or clothing, your lifestyle choices and your diet have created a situation where you are literally incompatible for society. You can't be mad that you can't fit clothes or can't sit in seats because you're 300 pounds. You can't be upset. You did that to yourself. It's not society's role to cater for you. You did that to yourself. And now the media argument. You mentioned that on television and online, there's not a lot of plus-sized bodies. You want to know why? Because your body is undesirable. Nobody wants to see you jiggle on a screen. <laughs> like, seriously, nobody wants to see a cue ball squeeze into lingerie and pose on Instagram. Trust me, nobody wants to see your roles. Seriously, get with the program. You want to be on television? You want to be looked fondly online? Why should the world change for you? You aren't special. You're just like me. You're just a person, all right? If you want to feel special, do something extraordinary, like losing weight, developing discipline, and learning about yourself in ways that other people haven't tried to, other people who aren't willing to. Okay, so this is a list of helpful phrases at the doctor's office that are body positive. You know, they're, they're fat affirming. And the person on the bottom who posted it literally said, Fat phobic doctors deserve to have their licenses stripped away for all time. All money and assets earned during their time as a doctor repossessed. And if they get hit by a bust, I may or may not be driving it. So be it. Wow, so um, let's hope that she doesn't become president because if there's any doctors in the audience, if you make the mistake in telling her that she has high cholesterol because you just got her blood work, uh, congratulations. Uh, you now owe her all of your money all of your licensing and all of your hard work is gone because you you did you did your job hi if you're talking about your quarantine body you're contributing to fat phobia disordered eating and toxic body culture just stop no no i will tell the world that i've had ample opportunity ample opportunity to go outside and jog to stay inside and do my push-ups sit-ups and weight training all of that because I nearly have five months of just alone time. Th thank you for 2020 coming in and just wrecking my schedule. But hey, I have I have time to myself and I can actually look really good when I can go back into society and buy food. Thin people actually think that they've earned their bodies. They honestly believe their thinness is a product of their own work. I'm not going to read the rest. I'm not going to read the rest because that sentence alone not only invalidates my work but most importantly all of the work that you guys have done every day i get a message from someone telling me how much weight they've lost since they've started watching my videos there's a woman in particular who lost 52 pounds 52 pounds when they started watching my show that's nuts and this person wrote this paragraph simply telling you that hey, if you've gotten thin through your own effort and through your own discipline, you didn't really do it. Because it's not real. It's not real to lose weight because your body isn't naturally thin. That's bull. They're saying that to drag you down. They don't like the fact that you're looking attractive. You have these gains. You have these muscles. You're about to have all these girls and guys on you because you're looking crispy. They're mad. Because they can never have that feeling. They don't want to recognize their own degeneracy. You guys did and changed your life for the better. And I am extremely proud of you. Like, oh my God. If I could hug all of y'all, I would. But I just, I can't leave my house. In all seriousness though, I really hope you guys don't meet somebody like this in real life. Because I'm not afraid of what they'll do to you emotionally i'm afraid of what you'll do to them physically like you might just punch them in the face and that's a lawsuit so i'd really hope you guys can stay out of jail <laughs>
Don't miss out on 95% of your life to weigh 5% less. Last time I checked, doing a couple sit-ups and push-ups at night doesn't equate to 95% of my life. I mean, it, I don't know what type of new math you're doing. And I hope you guys out there don't think that, you know, doing a couple push-ups, sit-ups, and jogging for an hour is taking away from your life. Because it isn't. It's giving you life. Genuine exercise extends your life. Congratulations, you're not dying at 85 like everybody else. You're dying at 95. That's 10 years of extra life. And all for what? What did you get from that? Oh, you just went outside to jog? It's that easy? Yes, it's literally that easy. Oh, you picked up a weight? You just picked one up. Oh my god, now now I'm 200 years old. I'm obviously joking. You're not going to live to be 200. You're going to live to be 2,000. You guys are kings. What I want to say, though, is that spending a little bit of time outside or taking a little bit of hours out of your day just to do a quick, simple workout will pay dividends for you. You're gonna be the healthy old person. You're gonna be the old guy doing backflips in the park. Trust me, it, it's like that. Obese is a slur, and it's based on false premises. Fatness does not cause health problems. Sure, Jan. Oh no, it gets worse, y'all. It gets worse. She pushes her Patreon, too. Oh lord, she has a Patreon to share her thoughts. You know what? Hey, it's the market. It's capitalism. If people want to give her money to, to just lie, uh, go ahead. A dollar a month to learn about structural oppression actually causing health problems. Last time, I, I didn't know that someone calling you obese actually made you obese. Maybe I should stop saying obese. Diet culture, count, weight, and measure your food for portion control. Still hungry after 10 tries? Try to ignore hunger, but craves one hour later and eats a jar of almonds, feels guilty and shameful. Diet culture rebel, eat what feels good and call it a day. Eat what she wants and moves on. Joke's on you, bitch, you're still eating almonds. Yeah, keep on eating healthy nuts and grains. You'll become one of us soon enough. You're gonna lose a little bit of weight, you could become one of us. One of us! One of us! How does it enabling with poor eating habits to continue their unhealthy path make somebody an ally? If you were heroin addicted instead of fat, being told doing heroin is fine and society sucks would be enabling. How is that different? Um, one, body size is not an indicator of health. Two, supporting individuals to have a peaceful relationship with food while focusing on non-weight related health promoting factors is almost certainly being an ally. And three, individuals can do what they want with their bodies. That's right, you can eat yourself to death and not a soul would care. No one, no one would care. Your doctor cares, maybe your family cares if you haven't chased them away, but in reality, strangers don't care. Yet you want the world to put you on a TV screen and make sure clothes fit you and change seats for you when in reality, you don't register. You're a nobody. I love these posts so much because there's always just generalizations and bad information. Literally, restricting dieting causes binge eating. No, that's not true. You were born with the intuitive eater. And that's not true. There's no such thing as intuitive eating. Favorite one is the one in the swimsuit. If you have to go hungry to be this body size, you weren't likely meant to be this body size. I love how fat logic and body positive people always go to the extreme, you know, example. They're like, oh, dieters must be starving themselves. No, we eat throughout the entire day, but we work out too. And also, we make sure to take care of what we're eating in the sense that we know that, oh, something might have more calories, something has more nutrients. We just are more aware of what we're eating than you, and that's why I and many others look really, really good. Because we go out of our way to take very good care of ourselves and what we eat. But you don't do that. You just post stuff like this onto the internet and think that you've won the argument. When in reality, if you don't follow what we're doing and our advice, you end up looking the way you do. Like someone who can fit into a piano box. Girl, you need a cheeseburger, idiot. And you need a salad. That model was really skinny, but that's her job though. Oh my god, I get that, and I believe all women are beautiful. However, when I make an innocent joke and another female decides to tell me I need a salad? That's just wrong. Yes, I'm a thick chick, but us thick ladies are just as pretty as skinny ones. I've been bullied half of my life over my weight, and now to be my age and adults are still doing it? It's just not right at all. No, you're not thick. Thick women don't have to, you know, alert the world that they're thick. You're fat. You are big. I truly feel sorry for all the curvy women out there who have had their words stolen from them. The fat girls took that from you, and now you guys are left with nothing. And some people even look at you and think that you're fat now. I'm sorry. Let's talk about how our PE teachers were fat phobic. 
Wow, God forbid your PE teacher asks you to work out, asks you to run, or do a sport. That's the class. They're, they weren't fat phobic, they just wanted you to work out. A thin acquaintance who assumes I've got nothing to do better than mother them into fully becoming. Me, a fat person refusing to be a supporting actress in my own life. This one's really an enigma. I have no I have no clue what this is supposed to mean or what this is supposed to argue. So um if y'all know, you can try to riddle it out, but I I am lost. It all depends on the way that you tell her. By telling her you can potentially help develop a healthy diet, a healthy workout routine and change your life around. Obesity isn't something to be proud of, and I hate that the body positivity movement has warped it into a movement of enabling bad habits and hatred towards anyone who tries to help their friends fix them, aka fat shaving fatphobic, etc. Yes, I love body positivity, but not as a mask for unhealthy habits that lead to a life of medical issues. Be extremely thoughtful about your approach. So this post is in response to another one that I couldn't find. It's essentially someone talking about how if you talk to your friend about their obesity and encouraging them to lose weight, you're being fat shaming, you're being rude, and that's not true. I think you've really encountered a good friend if they're willing to go out of their way to sit you down and be like, hey bro, you wanna go to the gym with me? You want to, you know, go to the, the swimming pool with me so we can do a couple laps? Do you want to do that? Do you want to just come to my house and pick up a weight? Because I want you to be here. I want you to be my friend for as long as possible, and obesity is going to take you away from me. It literally is. I'm not going to be able to be friendly with you if you're dead. I want you around. So come on, man. Let's go to the gym. That's a good friend. Have I mentioned how much I hate being plus size? Like, why is it a person with thin privilege can get a dress for $20? Because I'm plus size, the price instantly goes up to $30 for the same dress. Yes, the dress may be similar in color and shape, but what's not similar is the amount of fabric that goes into creating it. You are a bigger person. You require more fabric to cover your ginormous degenerate body. Please stop complaining about a $10 difference. It's not discrimination. Hot take. As an overweight person, fat acceptance and body positivity are not the same. Fat acceptance is toxic. Fat acceptance is encouragement of an eating disorder. Fat acceptance is detrimental. Body positivity is loving your body and choosing the healthier alternative. An experiment. Try complimenting a fat woman on something other than her hair, her skin, pretty face, bravery, or her inner beauty. Uh, I'm sorry, but last time I checked, you can't experiment on something that's fundamentally impossible. I always warn a bit when someone I admire intentionally starts losing weight. It really does feel like a loss, and it's hard not to feel like it's a repudiation of fatness and by extension, fat people. Oh, I'm so sorry that you feel inadequate because somebody that you admire is able to do something that you can never do. Why does health at every size only seem to apply to overweight people? You never see fat activists saying that underweight people can be perfectly healthy. You never see fat activists saying, you can't tell someone's health by looking at them, about a very thin person. They rail against thin models, actresses, and celebrities on the basis of judging thin women's health by looking at them and making all kinds of assumptions about whether or not they're using drugs or having eating disorders. It really makes you think, huh? What's up everybody, it's your boy Aileris, aka Panda Daddy, and I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, let me know in the comments down below, and leave a like if you like the video, and if you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe fam, what you doing watching videos, and not subscribing, and if you're old, make sure you hit that bell so you get these notifications every time, seriously, hit that bell, it's important, I hope you enjoyed today's content, seriously, if you want to have another installment of the Fat Logic series, let me know in the comments down below, if you want to request any other Reddit videos or horror stories videos on the Patreon, let me know in the comments down below, and also go to the Patreon so you can let me know there. Speaking of the Patreon, the new horror stories content will be coming out for you guys around Friday or Thursday, so if you're a Patreon supporter, look forward to that. It's a really, really nice video. I think you guys are going to like it. Um, if you want to catch that, you can go ahead and check out the Patreon. One dollar gives you access to all the early content, specifically early, you know, Reddit and Horror Stories content. And speaking of the Patreon, thanks again to Canned Eggplant, Finny, Jonas, Hostmar, Rachel, This Fool, Dustin, Will Billy, Jade, and Taki. Thank you so much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. And if you want to help support the channel, there is a link to the description to the Patreon that I've been talking about this entire time and the merch store. Both funds go directly into the channel to make sure we can maintain what's happening here. And as always, stay zesty!